Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to revisit a topic I've discussed in the past, and that's zinc plating. There are a number of items for the TS-50 that I'm going to be replating, and I thought I would come back and do a little review of the process that I use for the plating and uh, update everyone on where I'm at with the recipe. I'm going to make a little minor change to my plating bath recipe, and we'll take you through some of the steps. Now, I'm not going to go through all the nuances of every step of zinc plating. There are plenty of YouTube channels out there that have very good information on zinc plating, and I've covered it, in fact, myself in the past, I think at least a couple of times. So this is really just an update, and to bring you along on the journey for updating some of the, or replating rather, some of the parts for the TS-50 project, and I'll explain my rationale why I'm plating some of them uh, rather than purchasing new uh, some of these items are a little bit special, and I'll talk that through here in just a minute. So we're going to uh, change camera positions. I'll talk through some of the parts I'm starting with, and then eventually we'll end up over at the plating station where we'll get into the details of the process. Here's itself. the hardware I'm intending to start with my replating for the Suzuki uh, TS-50 project. Uh, we might end up doing more than this before it's over. I don't know. We'll see. This is where I'm going to start. And there are particular reasons why I'm uh, plating these parts rather than buying new or NOS. Now I've shared with you I think before that I don't typically replate common hardware that is still available from the OEMs. So things like um, panhead screws, these are uh, 6 millimeter by 16 millimeter long. JAS panhead screws, I buy these in bulk from McMaster Car. You can also buy these in almost all cases still from the OEMs. It's not worth, in my opinion, replating these and spending a lot of time when for uh, very little money you can buy uh, sometimes the new hardware. Same thing applies to uh, washers and nuts or smaller bolts or you know, shorter bolts. Often they're still available and they look identical to the originals. And uh, again, I don't, I don't just bother replating them because they're not that expensive. In this case, though, let's take a look at the motor mount bolts. There's three of them, obviously. The reason I'm replating these is, number one, they're no longer available from Suzuki, though you can probably find them NOS on eBay, though I would bet they're expensive. I did not look for them. But the real reason I'm replating these is they have the stylized S, as you can see, I think right there, all three of them, that I want to preserve. Now, I could go out, certainly, to a hardware store, go online and buy this bolt, this length, this thread pitch, wouldn't have the Suzuki S on it, and most people would never notice the difference. However, that doesn't work for me for a restoration. I want to preserve everything I possibly can, and I have the means to replate these myself, or certainly you could get them replated professionally. I'm going to do these myself, of course. Um, that's why I'm going to replate the motor mount bolts. And since I'm going to be uh, in the process of replating, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, washers and nuts as well. If they don't turn out the washers and nuts as well as I would like, then I can always buy new from uh, Suzuki. In terms of the, um, this happens to be the uh, swing arm pivot bolt, this is available from Suzuki. It's a little bit pricey. I think it's around 11, 12 US dollars currently. You can still buy this uh, as, long, as well as the hardware, that being the washers and the nut. But I'm going to get, since I'm going to be plating these anyway, I thought I'd go ahead and plate this um, swing arm pivot. Uh, take note here, by the way, that this pivot originally looked a bit like this motor mount bolt. And that is, the, uh, it was all corroded and rusty, so I just took it over the wire wheel and cleaned it up. And you can see now what it looks like. You can also see here where the plating has wore off. You can see the transition. So right here, that is raw steel. Right there, you can see the original plating as well as the uh, head of the fastener is... Uh, Relatively intact in terms of plating, there's a little bit of it wore off there. And at the other end, it looks actually pretty good in terms of plating. Now, all of these fasteners are in pretty good shape. They, they don't really indicate uh, any tool marks, that is, hammer marks. You know, quite often 
you know, backyard mechanics will take a framing hammer that's used for nails, and they'll, they'll pound on these, or they'll pound on motor mount bolts, and they'll mar them up and gouge them, or they'll use a vice grips or a pair of pliers on the nuts, you know, damage them. These fasteners don't exhibit any of that damage, uh, which is another reason why I'm going to go ahead and try to preserve them. Um, I do think the, well, at least one of the motor mount bolts was removed at one time because it was in backwards from the wrong side of the engine, I believe, from what Suzuki originally uh, intended or as it, as it was originally installed. But nonetheless, these are all in, in pretty good condition. These triple tree stem lower bolts, uh, I believe these are still available from Suzuki, though frankly, I don't recall exactly. It was quite a long time ago I checked, but the finish on these, that is the zinc, is not in very good shape. And again, since I'm plating these other bolts, I thought I'd go ahead and do those. As well as this fuel cap, you can see here, I think I talked about this in a previous video, this is zinc plated. You can see where the acid affected the zinc and started to remove it. So I am going to uh, replate that as well. You can still buy this, by the way, or you can still buy a fuel cap from Suzuki, brand new. Looks the same, except it doesn't have the stylized S as far as I can tell. The pictures I've seen just show a plain surface, and I want to preserve that, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't replate that as well. All of these parts are going to have to have the plating stripped. I'll talk about that. Uh, in more detail a little bit later on, but this is where I'm going to start. And again, I might expand the scope as uh, I get into it. We'll see. First thing we're going to do, though, is go over the computer. I want to share with you the um, slightly modified recipe for the bath that I'm going to use for this project, and then we'll, uh, we'll get on with uh, the stripping of the current finish in uh, cleaning up and then Eventually, we'll get on to the plate. I thought I would share with you an updated recipe I'm going to be using here for this uh, batch of parts. Now, normally, I save my plating solution, and I do have probably about a one U.S. gallon, four liters or so, maybe a little less, plating solution I've been using for years based on this very similar recipe to what you see on the screen right now. But that... Uh, that solution's pretty old. I've used it many times, and I thought I would just start with a fresh batch since uh, it's inexpensive. These materials are all very inexpensive. I had pretty much all of these already on hand with the, with the exception of the distilled water. I thought I'd use distilled water this time. We do have a well here where I live, and even though I have a water softener, actually I have a water softener in the shop, because our water is so hard that uh, I thought I'd try distilled water because we still end up with some minerals, uh, residual minerals in our water. So I didn't have the distilled water. I pretty much had everything else, though I did uh, have to go out and buy a new uh, container of uh, distilled white vinegar because I didn't have quite enough, and I did buy extra Epsom salts because I didn't think I had enough of that either. And I do believe I have just enough of the zinc sulfate that I bought years ago. It's been stored clean and dry. I think I have just enough to make the uh, solution I'm intending to mix up here shortly. Uh, you'll notice the, the quantities. This is all expressed in metric uh, measurements, 300 grams, 100 grams, 200 milliliters, etc. I did put underneath you can see the equivalent or approximate equivalent in um, traditional U.S. measurements, uh, 10.6 ounces, 3.5 ounces, 7.0 fluid ounces. Now remember that's a fluid ounce, not a weight measurement like you see up above. Bottom line is this recipe will make about 4.85 liters approximately or 1.3 U.S. gallons, uh, for those of you that prefer working in gallons versus liters. I prefer working in metric uh, measurements for this kind of an activity, so that's why I prepared this the way I did. But the primary change in this recipe, and there's a very slight change, is I'm going to be using the Carol brand light corn syrup, which is actually used as a brightener. 
to brighten up the zinc. Uh, the previous recipe, I think, called for just a white sugar, a refined white sugar. I thought I'd try the Carol brand light corn syrup, which is um, often suggested or recommended when you look up these recipes on online. And you will find this recipe all over the place, or a version thereof. Uh, might not be exactly identical in all uh, respects, but it's very, very similar, very common. So that's the the recipe I'm going to be using for this batch of parts, and we'll go over and we'll take a look at the setup. And in fact, we'll take a look at the these raw materials because I have not mixed this together yet. I'll talk about a little bit more over at the other. The other. I'll give batch. you a quick shot of the raw materials, the new raw materials I've assembled for this uh, zinc plating bath that I'm going to be creating. Again, all of this is new with the exception of the zinc sulfate. That's that white powder you see over there in that little glass jar. I'm, I am going to have to order more of that zinc sulfate. I think I'm pretty much use up what I've got left. So I'll pick some up off of eBay when I get around to it. But um, certainly more raw materials likely than I'm going to need for this batch. But uh, it doesn't really make any difference. They're all inexpensive, and I'm not worried about that. And the distilled water and the white vinegar I can use around the shop anyway. In the back there you see the little plastic uh, container I'm going to mix the batch in. I have all different sizes of those plastic containers left over from when we had large animals and we used to get feeding supplements and dewormers and you know other uh, chemicals and such that we used and so I kept a number of those around and they're very handy to have because they're uh, different sizes and for a batch of this uh, type or the size, you know, I don't need a great big five gallon bucket to mix it in. I will not store the uh, bath in that plastic container that's only going to be used for mixing because it's small and it's convenient. Now we're going to talk about part preparation before actual plating and this is probably the most critical step, believe it or not. For anyone that's done finishing work before, such as painting of a house, car, motorcycle, um, plating, uh, the the ultimate finished product, that is, the you've completed the work, completed the finish, probably 75% of that project is uh, associated with the part preparation and getting it ready to go. In other words, a good quality project completion will depend probably 75% on part prep. And any of you that's painted a house, a wall, know that the effort you put into getting the walls clean and prepared and masked and taped and... Uh, is more involved typically than just putting on the paint. That usually goes the quickest. Very similar here. What I'm going to do is have to remove all of the debris. You can see here all of this, this rust right here on this motor mount bolt, and it'll end up looking something like this swing arm pivot, which looked, this looked a lot like this when I started. You gotta get all that debris off, all that rust and corrosion, and I do that on a wire wheel. Now you could use media blasting to do it, do the same thing. I usually don't on a part like this. I will use the wire wheel, the steel wire wheel. I th simply think it, it works better. I will not wire wheel the fuel cap here. Um, I don't want to gouge that surface. I think it'd be too aggressive. So this won't be wire wheeled, but all these other parts will be. Once I have them wire wheeled and got them clean, that is the debris removed, then the parts will go into a rust remover bath to, uh, such as evaporust, to um, address any remaining rust that I can't see that might be microscopic or might be down in you know some of these crevices here that I can't get at with a wire wheel. About 24 hours in the solution of evaporust, take them out, rinse them good, uh, with warm water. Probably go back to the wire wheel a second time just to touch them up and try to brighten up the finish a little bit. And at that point then uh, we're going to move on to removing of the old zinc or original zinc finish. And I've talked about this already but this bolt, this, uh, this swing arm pivot, you can see it's got some remaining zinc here as well as around the head of the bolt and certainly on this end. I will remove a solution of water and muriatic acid, a dip to strip the remaining zinc to get back to raw steel. 
At that point, um, depending on the condition, I could go back the wire wheel, uh, maybe won't. It'll depend on what they look like. But what I want to end up with is a clean part that has no contamination and no rust and no original zinc. I want it all to be a uniform surface. And I'll brighten it as best I can on the wire wheel, that is brightening up the steel. Then the parts, uh, after they've had the original zinc stripped, the parts will go uh, into a wash cycle with either at clean acetone or denatured alcohol is the final wash, and at that point I'll start wearing gloves because I don't want to handle these parts with bare hands once I have them clean. So they'll be scrubbed in the acetone or denatured alcohol with a clean, fine brush like an old toothbrush uh, to get them again good and clean, and at that point, once they're dried, they'll be ready for uh, plating. Now, I typically will store the parts that have reached that stage, that is, they're ready for plating. Um, I'll just leave them right in the wash of acetone or denatured alcohol for storage because these parts will start to flash rust almost immediately because they will be bare steel. And even though I work in a heated, dry environment, it will, they will start to flash rust. Uh, even though it might be microscopic and you can't see it with a bare eye right away or naked eye right away, it will happen. So. I'll just leave them right in the wash or the bath until uh, I'm ready to plate them and take them out and at that point, you know, start the plating process. So, uh, multiple steps, uh, you know, first wire wheel or media blast, uh, de-rusting bath such as evaporust, strip the original zinc finish, final bath and rinse to clean off any remaining contamination. Now, in the case of this a fuel cap, uh, I will do pretty much everything I just talked about except wire wheel it. I will strip the original finish off. There, there are uh, a couple of little minor birds that I can feel here that I will probably clean up with some very fine emery paper or sandpaper and polish it up a little bit, but I'm not going to get too aggressive with it. I just want to uh, clean it, strip the original finish, and then um, we'll see how that replays. If uh, any of these parts don't replate well, especially the nuts, bull, the nuts and washers, uh, I'll probably just replace them with new. These three bolts right here, these motor mount bolts, are the most critical because of that stylized Suzuki S right there that I'm trying to preserve. The rest of these, actually even including the fuel cap, I could replace with new pretty easily. Um, not necessarily inexpensively, but pretty easily. These three, I would have to either try to find NOS out on eBay or, you know, figure out another solution uh, to, pre to preserve or replace those with equivalents. So that's the process for uh, the uh, preparing the parts for plating. I think at this point I'm going to call this video a wrap and bring this one to a close, and we will pick up in the next video the actual part preparation process. I'll take you through some of the steps, let you see me actually doing it. I'm not going to show you know the details of all of these parts every step, but I'll give you a flavor of what I'm going to do as we prepare the parts for plating, and we might in fact get into plating. In fact, we probably will certainly get into plating in the next video. That's going to be it for this video today, folks. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.